and welcome to YSO From Home, a video series produced by the musicians of the Yakima Symphony Orchestra. I'm principal percussionist Josh Gianola, and today we're going to talk about how a percussionist manages to practice the wide variety of instruments that they are required to play in an orchestral setting or an audition setting. To begin, I'd like to talk about the sequential pacing of how I organize my practice session from beginning where I get the piece to performance. So naturally, if someone has to be at a professional level at say six or seven different instruments, they're going to have to split their time up six or seven different ways. This is going to look differently depending on what stage of practice that someone is in. And for me personally, I like to do an hourglass method. So I will start with whatever project I'm working on, thinking about the big picture. I'll try to play through everything and that could be every instrument or every piece. If I'm practicing for an orchestral audition, I will try to play through the entire list, even at its own various stages of preparation. So I'll sight read really, really slowly through anything that's brand new. I will run through anything that I've played before, um, anything that I just like have in my hands and is like ready to go right away. I might skip that at the very beginning just because I know that it's going to ultimately require way less work. So then in the middle part of the hourglass is when I get really specific. And this is when I'm going to maybe only practice one or two instruments in a day. So versus the, the larger, the top part of the hourglass maybe, where I'm practicing everything every day for maybe a week just to get everything baseline in my hands. In the middle part, I'm trying to get everything to a really high level which means a lot more time with any specific instrument. So I may practice one or two excerpts on snare drum and that takes up my entire day because I'm trying to get it from a not professional level to really polished and nice and ready to go. And then maybe the next day I'll play um, a marimba piece all the way from not prepared to prepared. And this process is going to be kind of where the bulk of the work comes and this is where the bulk of the, the, the details come in. If I'm practicing for an upcoming concert, this could look differently. This might look more like I am going to get really specific on one piece. There might be transitions from one instrument to another that I have to focus on. Um, so. I am going to identify what is the most difficult part, and that's what I'm going to be specifically tackling during this smaller section and this more like hyper-focused section. Then as whatever event comes closer, whether it's an audition or it's an orchestral performance, I start to zoom out again and I start to make sure that while I was practicing specific things, other things didn't kind of fall by the wayside. If this is an audition list, uh, a percussionist's audition list may have up to 60 excerpts. So that might mean in a two day period, I'll play through all 60, but I'll only spend maybe five or 10 minutes on any individual piece. And if things go great, if I play through one excerpt and it sounds really, really good, maybe I'll play through it one other time. If it continues to sound good, I'll be like, great, I don't need to play this for, I, I don't need to work on this anymore today. So then I am trying to get everything to its very highest polished level. And I also have to start thinking about the mental game of everything. I would say that for a percussionist and for likely all instrumentalists, that the psychology of a performance is just as, if not more, important than the actual physical attributes and the physical demands of the instrument. Um, if your head's not in the right place, then you're going to have a bad performance. If you're in a really great place mentally and you're feeling positive and you got a great night's sleep, you may have a weirdly good performance. Um, so in order to practice this, what I'll end up doing is doing playthroughs of things and then practice literally my mindset. How do I want to feel? How do I guide what my brain is telling me during an excerpt or during a piece? 
if I'm playing through a piece with a recording, I might be practicing how to count the rests. I may be practicing where to put my attention and my focus so I don't accidentally get lost or lose my focus. So I'm practicing the mental aspect of the performance just as much as I had uh, practiced the, the physical aspect. I may practice the, the physical things that happen to me when I perform. For example, very often my heart will start racing just before I actually perform. So a way to practice that is like I may go run a couple laps around my own house like at top speed to get my heart just pounding really quickly and suddenly and then come in the house and play through a series of excerpts just to practice what that feels like to play through something when my heart is racing or when adrenaline is going. Another trick that I've heard and I've done a couple times is like you watch a really scary movie because that gets your anxiety really high and maybe I will get myself really scared and then I'll try to play a difficult excerpt. So to review, in this hourglass shape, I'm thinking broadly, I'm thinking really specifically and physically, and then I'm thinking even more broadly, maybe at the base, I'm trying to practice everything that I can. I'm trying to condense as many excerpts into one day as possible. And then I'm also practicing the mental side of uh, what the performance is going to look like, whether it's an audition or an orchestral performance. Something else to talk about, about how to manage to practice all these different instruments is the idea of staying in shape, which essentially comes down to practicing again and again and again, forever, the basics and the fundamentals of any instrument. For snare drum, this is going to look like making sure that my hands are able to perform at a high level of speed, a high level of precision and clarity and nuance, even at softer dynamics. Um, at xylophone, this is going to be practicing exercises that promote a high level of precision note-wise. For like marimba, this could be four mallet technique. For accessories, this is going to look like practicing the fundamentals and the basics of each and every accessory. The most common ones to practice and the ones that it's most important to keep in shape, I would say for any audition or performance are going to be tambourine cymbals and triangle. Um, those accessory instruments are on every audition and they're on nearly every show that you'll wind up playing. Let's take a look at what some of these fundamental exercises look like. On snare drum, I'll do a simple eight on a hand and then alternating between hands in a faster rhythm like 16th notes. On xylophone, I'm going to practice every major scale every single day. For marimba, I want to practice a variety of intervals with two mallets in each hand. For tambourine, I'm going to practice two different kinds of rolls. That would be a finger or thumb roll. And a shake roll. And then I'm going to be practicing a bunch of different rhythms with a metronome.
For crash symbols, I'm going to practice a bunch of different kinds of crashes. I'm going to be practicing soft crashes, loud crashes, really fast, really wide. For triangle, I'm just going to be practicing the basic technique and the triangle roll. There's a few different ways to triangle roll. There can be with your hand kind of to the side of the triangle. There can be underneath. And there can be a roll using the top angle. Along with fundamentals, it's really important to double dip as much as you can. When I'm practicing snare drum, I'm practicing time, I'm practicing tone. That is going to apply to the xylophone, that's going to apply to the marimba, that's going to apply to any instrument I do, which is why I'm going to use a metronome for everything. These fundamental aspects of music are going to be the most important things because they're going to be applicable to so many different instruments. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are a percussionist, first off, good for you. And second off, uh, I hope that I was able to provide a little bit of clarity and insight into what it takes to stay in shape and at a performance level in a wide variety of instruments. Thanks very much.